Hi guys, welcome back to another video and this is a review on the Logitech Craft keyboard. Um, I've had this keyboard for about a week now, um, I'm still starting to get to grips with it, um, but overall I really really like it. Uh, so we'll just start with the construction of the keyboard. Uh, most of it is made of a plastic and then you've got the top half here of an aluminium uh, which is finished in the space grey. Well, graphite grey, but um, I think it goes really well with the, uh, like the space grey iPad um, and the phones that they've got out. I also think this colour scheme would go really well with the new iMac Pro that's coming out at the end of the year. So on the underside of the keyboard, um, you've got like this rubber feet, these rubber feet, and um, also the weight of the keyboard will keep it anchored down in place wherever you decide to put it. I think most of the weight is actually put in the uh, top aluminium strip where I think the battery is also located uh, because it is a really like hefty keyboard to look at. It doesn't look, you know, very heavy or even very well built, but to feel it's really, really good. So um, as you can see, all of the keys are completely backlit. Um, I've personally never seen a keyboard with a number pad, um, which, is, which is wireless and backlit. Um, so this was a, one of the features that I really liked and also made me buy it. Something else which was really cool was the um, keyboard illumination to get the keys to actually light up. You don't need to touch the key, you uh, purely just hover your hands over the top of it and it will cause the keys to light up, which was a really nice feature. The keyboard is completely wireless, it's controlled, uh, it's, it's wireless via Bluetooth. It comes with its own uh, USB dongle, which you can put into any PC or Mac, but you can also use the um, inbuilt Bluetooth that you've got into your um, computer or Mac. So looking at the top of the keyboard, you've got your brightness up and down for your um, Mac or Windows. And then uh, moving across, you've got all the sort of Mac shortcut buttons, uh, which I don't really use. You've got a uh, keyboard uh, brightness down and then brightness up. You've got your shortcut buttons for iTunes or Windows or whatever you use for music. Rewind, play, pause, and fast forward. You've got a mute button, and you've got your volume up and down buttons. Uh, moving more to the right side, you have uh, the easy switch one, two, and three buttons. This allows you to switch from various Bluetooth devices. So for example, if you had a iPhone, an iPad and a Mac all set up on like a desk. You just hit those buttons and you'll switch uh, from device to, uh, to the next device. Really nice feature and it's really, really easy to use. Um, I currently have mine set up, uh, one being for the Mac, two being for my iPad Pro, uh, three being for my Kodi box. That's a really nice feature. Uh, so it just allows me to like choose whatever track or uh, series or movie that I wanted to, to play on there. Then moving right over to the far side, uh, you've got a shortcut button for calculator, which I think is really cool. You just hit that and the uh, calculator uh, just comes up on the Mac. Further to the right, you've got a um, camera, well, which just looks like a little camera symbol. Uh, this is actually a screenshot button. So it will basically just take a, a screenshot of whatever's appearing on the uh, Mac or um, your Windows computer. Uh, this is really, really nice for the Mac because um, you've always had to press quite a few buttons. I think it's like Control, um, Command, and uh, for, I can't, I, I never can remember. I usually have to Google it. So yeah, all you need to do is just literally hit that button and, and job done, it will just appear straight on your desktop. And then moving across slightly, there's a button here. I don't actually know what that does, whether I need to do an update or look at the application. Uh, and then finally, on the far right, you have a lock button that will simply just switch users. You'll uh, switch from user to user, whatever you've got on your Mac or Windows. So the main form factor of this keyboard, I would say, is probably the craft dial or the create dial, I think they call it. This basically allows you to utilize the program you're using to like its maximum capabilities. So for example, if you were using Photoshop or Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, uh, this dial comes in handy. It's also made of a aluminum construction like on the top of the keyboard. Um, it's really, really nice to touch. To turn, it's like a sort of 
like a jog wheel if you like so it's not a smooth dial it moves um, from sort of you know bounce to bounce if you if you see what I mean um, I actually haven't made uh, good use of this dial yet uh, because I don't really use any applications that support it um, I'm really hoping that Logitech will release an update where the you could use it on uh, video editing of like Final Cut Pro I think the possibilities with this dial to be honest are quite endless uh, just providing that Logitech do the, the software updates. I was thinking that possibly using the dial to zoom in and out on your timeline would be a really nice feature or even just panning from your timeline. Yeah, I mean, currently as it stands, I do use the dial, but for really simple functions. You can control the brightness of your uh, Mac using the dial and you can also control the volume. That's all I really use it for at the moment. Although I did find when I was using Google Chrome, something came up on the screen whereas when you actually um, have several tabs so say you had 10 tabs loaded up on google chrome you could just switch the dial and it will um, just show you each uh, tab that you've got on um, and it's really quick really responsive and a really nice feature to have i actually use it quite a lot now um, there's something just really nice about using the dial instead of just you know flicking with your mouse to keep choosing each one so something to just quickly mention about the creative dial, I think that's what it's called. So yeah, it's, it's literally like a finger touch um, sensitive dial. As soon as you touch it with your finger very slightly, um, it will cause the, um, the display to be triggered and, and it will tell you what, um, what's about to be achieved, i.e. volume up, tab switching, or whether it be um, something in the application that you're using. So yeah. Overall, the keyboard is really, really nice. Um, I love how uh, how it's built. Really, really nicely made. I used to own the um, Logitech K811, uh, but uh, this thing is now going to be chucked on eBay, I think. A really nice keyboard, um, and the color schemes did actually go really well with the Mac that I've got at the moment. Um, but um, this one just trumps it, I think. The keyboard is actually charged via a USB-C port, not a micro USB. I'm assuming that's for uh, quicker charging and also um, most likely that the battery in this is, is quite hefty. Also talking about battery, um, I don't know the, uh, the quoted battery time that uh, Logitech give. I'll just put it up on the screen now. Um, but I'm assuming it's really good. I mean, I've had like months of, uh, well, I've, I've, every month I need to charge this keyboard, uh, which is perfectly fine for me. You can you can still operate the keyboard whilst it's charging. So yeah, you, it's a it's a win-win. That's pretty much a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions about the keyboard or you would like more content like this, please just like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, spread the word. I'm still quite a new channel and I'm trying to uh, trying to get as much work out as possible. Um, and I also hope you enjoyed the little edit that I done at the start, which was uh, took a little bit of time. But that's pretty much it, guys. That's a wrap. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.